Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 668. Six Popular Myths About Weight Loss. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we are going to be talk about six popular myths about weight loss. And many of my patients have been fooled by these myths. I think it's important to, um, to educate people before they're fooled by the myths about weight loss and keep you from having to follow diets that, or exercise programs or food choices that just don't work. Um, in my medical practice, I uh, get to have consultations with my patients who are coming in for hormone replacement with pellets, but also they're coming in to develop better habits, to be healthier, to treat illnesses before they become critically uh, uh, dangerous. So one of the things that we talk about is how to change lifestyles to a healthy lifestyle in terms of eating and exercise. And many of the things that my patients tell me they've tried in terms of diet or exercise um, actually sound maybe believable and they just have never worked. All of these things that they tell me their history and I tried this and I learned this about on Channel 5 or I learned this on um, Instagram or my doctor told me to do this and it didn't work. Well, some of those um, myths, I'll say myths and not lies, some of those myths uh, about weight loss actually seem like they might logically make sense However, if you're a doctor, you know that phys physiologically, it doesn't make sense. And it is not going to work. We know from the outset, it won't work for weight loss. So that's some of them. Some of the other, some of the other diets that people have tried or weight loss programs that they've tried actually um, make me giggle, but I can't giggle in front of my patients because they're so bizarre that it's clear that they're not going to work just from a logical standpoint. But People are desperate because we've all been eating wrong. We've all been eating too much. We've been eating too many carbs. We were told by our, our government to eat more carbs than we ate fat, than we ate protein. And now we're in a, um, in a miserable position of most of us having prediabetes or insulin resistance, and that means we're overweight. So more than half of the American population is overweight. So And that's huge, and that matters because... That means half of our population is looking for a way to lose that extra pound of fat or extra pounds of fat. So um, myth number one, let me get straight to the, straight, straight to the, the myths. Myth, m myth number one, if you eat fewer calories, you will lose weight and every calorie is the same. Well, that kind of makes logical sense but it's just simply not true. Most doctors will tell you that. They think that. But when you actually physiologically take it apart, every type of food, we divide food into groups of uh, carbohydrates, proteins, and, and fats. Each type of food requires a different process to be metabolized after you eat it. And each food type requires a certain number of your calories to actually digest and, and use those food types. So if we're looking at how many calories does it you, do we expend when we're eating proteins? Well, proteins require the fewest, uh, excuse me, the, um, excuse me, the most amount of calories. So you're expending a lot of energy to uh, actually metabolize proteins. 
That means you kind of get a benefit of using up calories while you're eating. The, the next food group that takes fewer calories to digest is fats. And so fats are not digested uh, as quickly as carbohydrates, but they're still pretty quickly um, digested and they do not use very many calories to be digested. Carbohydrates, of course, are the least number of calories to, to be digested. So just at the outset of eating these different food groups, that means the calories in a protein that actually get to your system are going to be less because they use a lot of calories to be digested than the calories that are protein or, uh, excuse me, are fat or um, carbohydrates. So just in digesting them, they're different. There is also another uh, factor. There's many factors in this, but each type of food um, stimulates insulin in a different way. Insulin makes us Actually, insulin is, you've heard this many times from me, insulin carries blood sugar to the cell. But because the American diet is so high in carbohydrates, we over-respond with too much insulin. Our body then becomes insulin resistant to save the cells from cell death. So we can't get the insulin plus sugar into the cell, so we make a lot of fat in our bodies. We store it. We don't make energy in the cells. So... The highest, easiest, fastest increase in insulin comes from eating carbohydrates. So those calories from carbohydrates are not the same as calories from protein that don't stimulate the insulin very much. So, and, and in addition, the carbohydrates are metabolized faster. So they get into your bloodstream faster. So you have a big sugar spike, a big um, insulin spike, and then it drops, so you get hypoglycemic from it, especially if you're insulin resistant. So this is where, there's many other factors, but these are the easiest, believe it or not, uh, for me to explain the difference between the different types of foods. So a calorie is not a calorie. Um, if you were to eat 500 calories of steak and 500 calories of uh, a, a slice of birthday cake was icing, you would get two different, completely different outcomes. The steak would not stimulate your insulin so much. It would slowly be metabolized, and it would use up a lot more calories in your digestion than the cake, which would immediately go into your bloodstream, increase your blood sugar, increase your insulin, and then get to your cell and not be able to enter because you're insulin resistant. So it would make more fat. Protein is a better food source for losing weight, for losing fat. So we always have to have, <laughs> you have to have more calories expended. In other words, exercise or just by living. You have to have more calories burned than you have calories coming in to actually lose weight. And the choice of your food does matter. So a calorie is definitely not a calorie. So that should be just kind of taken off your list. If you've tried this, you know that that's true because you haven't lost weight if you've eaten a high-carbohydrate diet. Myth number two. If you just eat one food for a blank number of weeks, foods like grapefruit or cabbage, cabbage soup, cabbage soup diet, or salad, or just juice, or pick just watermelon, pick a food for six weeks, then you're going to lose weight. So... The best example I have of this not working, and it doesn't work, and it doesn't work in a lasting fashion, you may, you may lose some water weight this way, and you'll definitely be hungry all the time, and you definitely, you definitely won't um, have energy with any of these one food, sim simple single food diets, um, is the cabbage soup diet. Back in the um, early 2000s, the cabbage soup diet went from person to person, gossip to gossip. People were recommending it to their friends, and everybody wanted to be just as miserable as their friend by eating cabbage soup for six weeks. Now, when patients came into my GYN practice and they told me they were going to do this, they were so excited, best diet. And all I could say was, I don't think this is going to work, and I think it is going to be 
um, another diet that you fail. And, and as you fail more diets and more diets, you just lose your energy to even try anymore. So I would try to share that information with my patients. Um, and it turned out that most of my patients, a few lost weight, but it came right back when they went off the diet, most of my patients literally gained weight. And that is because most of St. Louis is a uh, A blood type. And because they're an A blood type, <laughs> they will uh, gain weight on cabbage. If they eat cabbage, it slows their metabolism down. And A blood type people gain weight when they eat cabbage. So some of my patients gained 20 pounds on this thing. And it was a huge disaster because then they didn't know what to do to lose weight. Honestly, I tried to help them with uh, medication plus food choices plus exercise, which are things that are very hard to do. To change your lifestyle is very hard to do, and, and most of them could not accomplish that. So that ended up being a massive weight gain that they couldn't get rid of. So please don't follow fads. In general, they're baseless. Um, they make everybody who shares it with another person feel important because they feel like they're experts, but it really is founded on nothing, and they don't work. My third myth, you can exercise your way to weight loss and eat whatever you want. There are very few people that this would work for. Genetically, there's a few people this might work for, and I have to stop here and say that every person has a perfect diet for them to achieve their ideal weight. It is determined by your genetics. It doesn't change over time. It do, It is, you're born with this perfect diet that we spend our life trial and error trying to find the diet that is best for us. And uh, some of us never find that. We luckily have a uh, genetic test that will, called Nutrigen that will tell you how much protein, fat, and carbohydrate is good for you, when you should eat, how much you should eat, how many calories you should eat. And that should be the way we plan all our diets. Unfortunately, not everybody uh, can have a genetic test to tell what they should eat. However, um, this test also tells people if exercise contributes to weight loss. Now, exercise for some people will help with their weight loss, but they still have to be on a low carb, no junk food, no sugar diet, no alcohol diet to actually achieve weight loss. So it's painful. As much fun as it is gaining weight and eating the wrong things, it's just as painful trying to lose that fat. And we're not losing just weight, we're trying to lose fat because we don't want to lose muscle. Muscle is where we burn our calories. Um, exercise gets even harder. Uh, my patients tell me this, but now there's a study that says that uh, after age 45, our whole molecular metabolism changes, and whatever we did for weight loss before 45, and it worked, will not work after 45. It's a whole different change. And I don't know if that is because they didn't address replacing testosterone to try to preserve the, um, the under 45 metabolism, but they did say that it happens to everybody. It happens again at 60, and it makes it even harder to lose weight. You become much more efficient with your food. So fat is harder to get rid of. So exercise is part of every diet plan. But if you eat whatever you want, and exercise, and God forbid you're over 45, then it's gonna be very, very hard for you to lose weight or impossible. So I would not hang my hat on that type of a diet. Um, myth number four, low fat diets are the ideal way to lose fat. Well, the first problem with low fat diets is you can't stay on them because you're always hungry. Fat helps keep us feeling full. It takes a long time to metabolize fat. It keeps our stomach full longer. It keeps our uh, hunger centers from feeling, making us feel hungry. So eating, not eating fat has to be compensated by eating something else. Most people eat carbohydrates instead, so they then do 
the absolute wrong thing. They eat carbohydrates, no fat. They're stimulating their insulin, becoming more insulin resistant. And that's the worst diet. Low fat, high carb diet is the way to gain weight. It's not the way to lose weight. So if you've been told not to eat um, fat because of your weight or because of your cholesterol, that's another lie. Low fat diets do not decrease uh, your cholesterol. They increase your cholesterol. I mean, excuse me, they increase your cholesterol because you eat more carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the key. Cut carb carbohydrates and your cholesterol will go down. So a low fat diet that we were told by our government and lots of other medical groups that we should be on a low fat diet, it is not founded in science and it doesn't work. And we have lots of years, 20 or more years, to show that that type of diet does not cause people to lose fat. Um, number five, high protein diets are dangerous and not effective for weight loss. That's simply not true. High protein diets are exactly what we have to replace carbohydrates with so that we can lose weight. We have to make sure we maintain our muscle mass. Muscle is where 90% of our calories are burned. So we have to maintain our muscle mass. We need protein. We need protein for all the cells in our body. We need protein to rebuild our muscles. Protein is very vital to our existence. Carbohydrates are simply for energy. If you think of them that way, then unless you're going to go run for 20 minutes on the treadmill after you eat two pieces of bread and eat uh, some chips with it, then you're going to gain weight. That is not the way to lose weight. You have to eat a higher protein diet, a lower carb diet. Uh, for weight loss. And it is not dangerous. And it's been proven over and over again that if you're also eating, like the um, South Beach diet, if you're also eating vegetables and fruit, then eating a high protein diet is, is an excellent way to lose weight. Let me regress. I don't view fruit or vegetables except potatoes and bananas as highly carb. They are in general free foods. You can't eat a lot of, of fruit and vegetables unless you're eating carbs with it. You, it. you get satiated fast. So a high protein diet with fruit and vegetables is the ideal diet and not counting your fat. You can still have butter. You can still have um, healthy fats, milk fats. So that is the ideal fat. It is not dangerous and that should be where we, uh, where we concentrate our diet programs. Um, last but not least, Diet soda, diet sweeteners are not free foods. The only sweetener that is safe and does not stimulate your insulin is stevia. It comes from a plant. It's called Truvia stevia. It is a sweetener that is natural and does not stimulate insulin. It is also not carcinogenic. The other sweeteners that we've used in the past have been found after the fact to be carcinogenic. So anything yellow, blue, or pink you should not use, and you should not drink soda that has any of those things in it. So you have to look for so soda. If you're going to drink so any kind of diet soda, it should be um, stevia soda. Like, it's called Zevia. There's other sodas that have stevia as the sweetener, and that's the only safe soda you should have. If you're drinking, like one of my patients, 15 diet sodas a day and not eating much, you can still gain weight. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but... Because it stimulates your insulin, it shuts down your fat burning areas and it makes fat with almost no calories added. So even if you're exercising, you will not feel good if you're just drinking 15 uh, diet sodas a day um, and you will not be able to lose weight. That is not something that I advocate. I try to get people to stop drinking diet soda and, and if they're going to drink a soda, have just bubble water or something that has stevia as a sweetener only. In any case, soda is probably not the best drink. Water is the best drink for weight loss. So that's the, the six myths. Uh, I will continue this with six more myths that have to do with your uh, general health and weight loss uh, next week. And we will um, try to help you make decisions based on fact and not based on lies. And pretty much anything that you read on Instagram, Facebook, or you get from governmental agencies, you probably can't really trust them for a good plan for weight loss. You should go to doctors who are educated in 
uh, in nutrition and, and or get your genetics tested and see what your body was made to eat. And that's my advice today. I hope to see you next week when we'll talk about the rest. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.